Hey, it's Rich, and you're listening to the Mature Me Podcast, weekly content devoted to all things life, leadership, culture, and faith. Thank you for taking some time to tune in. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on all our social channels so you don't miss a thing. Let's listen to today's episode. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mature Me. So glad that you are tuning in. Don't know where you're at in the world. If you're watching by way of YouTube, leave us a comment right now. Let us know where you are. Maybe you're listening to the podcast in your car. We're so grateful that we have the opportunity to come. Hopefully today's episode will encourage you. Do us a favor, like it, share it, subscribe. It makes a huge difference around here. One of my favorite things in the world to do is get to talk to my friends friends that are doing an amazing job, friends that are leaving a a massive, massive mark on the earth today. And today, I'm honestly getting to talk to one of my favorite people for a very long time, but also one of the funniest people I know. I also think one of the sharpest minds I know. And uh, if you've been watching at all, the last, I would say, three to five years, there's been a brand new momentum on this man's life. And for me, as his friend, it's really exciting to watch and see all the things that he's doing around the world, but especially in the body of Christ today. And I'm talking about none other than my friend, Mr. Pastor, Prophet, Teacher, Apologist, Theologian, Nathan Finocchio. Hello. How are you, man of God? Well, good, Richie. It's good to be here in Miami. It's always good to be here in Miami. That's my favorite, by the way. The most Canadian thing you could ever say. But my it's good. Th- it's, it's always good to be down here in Miami. But my favorite term is like, can you call man of God? Yeah. That's How good. are you, man of God? Yeah. Mighty man of valor. You know, that's from uh, the story of Gideon right there. Yeah. It's a great moment. Judges six and seven. We don't want to, you know, should we do yeah. Bible quiz for a little bit and yes. find out who's sharper? Yes. Who's the oldest man in the Bible? Um, Come on. Jesus. Nope. Uh, Still's not a, dead. A, a, <laughs> Ancient of Days. <laughs> He's going on like Ancient of Days. Methuselah 989. Like that, that, that guy, you know? <laughs> did you ever, did you ever, do you know about a thing called Bible Quiz? Did uh, that make it up to Canada? No. Never heard of Bible Quiz? No. So I'm Assemblies of God kid growing up. Yeah. You are an independent, charismatic, Pentecostal. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Mutt. Yeah. Lack of accountability. Lack, yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to that in a moment. But yeah. Bible Quiz was this thing that I used to go to on Sunday nights before Sunday night church where it was pop quiz for Bible trivia yeah. with buzzers and kids would get so good that they would answer the question before the question was finished. <laughs> so they would start with, who's the old, bang! Yeah. Who's the oldest person in the Bible? Methuselah. You never did it, huh? No, I never did that, but I would have, we did sword, swords? Sword drill. Sword drill. Yeah. Sword drill. Swords. Swords, different. Swords is a different game. Sword drill. Which, I love swords, too. Hey, I love swords. Yeah, yeah. But sword drill, it's very different. It's a phenomenal game, but, but not the same thing we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Sword drill, and no cheating, you have to hold the Bible by the spine. You can't hold it by the pages, because if you're holding by the pages, you're cheating, you know, and, and you're kind of going through, you know what I mean? Like, because they say, you know, he okay, turn to Hebrews 6. Or two. Well, Hebrews, you're just going, oh. I know where it is, right? That's cheating. It's you totally gotta hold the cheating. spine. The thing is, I don't think I would do as good on the sword drill these days because I've gone so digital with my reading and I stuff. I still bring a Bible to church. Yeah. Still have it on my study days, but yeah. let's be honest. Dude, when 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 guys used to preach like before digital Bibles, they had a lot more buffer. So they'd go, okay, let's turn the Bibles to Hebrews six. And then you'd have a minute of yep. shh. Yep. Shh, right? All the Are pages you there? turning. Are you there? Totally. Are yeah. you there? Yeah, and, and the preacher could kind of gather his thoughts, you know, maybe adjust his tie, have a drink. Yep. That's gone. Totally gone. Now you have to be on. What are some of the things you think that are totally gone from preaching that we used to kind of grow up around that was just things you could get away with back in the day that you just can't get away with now? Just telling people that they're going to go to hell? Yeah. Just, just point at them and go, well, you, sir, you in the, green, in the green suit, you're going to hell. Don't you feel like you're kind of still doing that? Well, I try to. I, I try to get at least three or four in every Sunday. Just keep people on their toes. <laughs> just keep them Imagine going to church man. and somebody just calls you out like what you're wearing, right? You know, the, the, the prophecy shirt guy, but it yes. backfires. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, you know, rainbow, you know, coat of oh, many colors. Oh, you got a rainbow shirt on? <laughs> Ow. That's, so A, that's out. Scott's covenant, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I bet that's why you're wearing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do you think? What, what else have we lost? Well, you preaching? know, like one of the things I feel like that I've lost is like, I grew up going to Sunday morning church, yeah. Sunday night church, mm. Wednesday night church. I went to church every day, but yeah. primarily in the big service, as they called it, there was Sunday morning, Sunday night, and, and Wednesday night. 
But a lot of times you go to Sunday night. And now at 39, I get what was taking place. Didn't all the way know as a kid. Right. But man, a lot of times that preacher would come up there and be like, you know what? I just feel like we're supposed to keep singing this right now. <laughs> like I've, mm-hmm. yeah. in, in the eight years of pastoring Voo Church, yeah. I've walked up many Sunday nights going, man, I would love not to preach, but I have still yet to be like, hey guys, yeah. sing that again. We're just gonna, I feel led to pray for people. Yeah. Now I've learned you feel led to pray for people because you didn't prepare. Yeah, sermon's not ready. Just not ready. Totally, yeah. You, you, you kind of had a rough draft that you went over while taking in the, bull, you know, the Bills game. <laughs> you, right? You know what I mean? And then you got two into that Bills game, and now we're doing we're doing the extra song and the altar call. I love it. Yeah, I totally. It. But they just like for yeah, there's some some churches would call it maybe like an anointing service. Oh, totally. Yeah. Anointing service and then multiple altar calls until you finally got someone to move. Totally. Yep. I feel like, I feel like we, I don't see it as much. You know what? I think there's someone you just keep calling something until you get some kind of movement. Yeah. But I'll be honest with you, as a teenager, I much preferred that to having to listen to this guy speak again. Do you know what I mean? Because then you're just like, oh, I'm n- now I'm back to, you know, finding dirty verses in Leviticus. And, and I used that all up this morning and on Sunday. Do you know what I mean? Is that really something you were doing when you were younger? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah give me, find give a good me, one. Just for the listeners out there real quick, what is the dirtiest verse in Leviticus? Oh, I, probably Leviticus 18.23. Um, I'm not going to... Remind us, my sword drills off, you yeah. know. It's it has to do with having sex with animals. Yep, totally. Yeah. Bestiality. <laughs> yeah, totally. Do you it's find, like I can't believe it's saying this. So you know what's funny? Who are is, these people? I just talked to a friend. Who was I just talking to? This is so interesting. Where were they? They're at this event conference, and somebody was teaching on is it veganism or being a vegan, like how that actually has demonic roots. Yeah. Because genuinely you get to a place that you're loving animals more than humanity and it gives way watch this to bestiality Ooh, kind of an interesting take <laughs> that's hilarious that's like wow that's a big jump i could see it yeah. but maybe you know my blood type just yeah. doesn't do great right. with me i once heard a scholar say that vegetarian is just an old greek word for bad hunter <laughs> i call that a spirit of jacob yeah spirit of yeah spirit of they're in the kitchen yeah. just you bad know, hunter exactly bad hunter <laughs> that's funny um <laughs> So I'm so happy that you're here today. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Dude, so much cool stuff I think is happening with you right now. I'm trying to think our friendship must have begun. I met you at the, I met you at, I think the first VU conference. Genuine, 2010, 2011. Yeah. Watch this. I met you at a pool party. Do you remember this? At a pool party, that's very true. Yeah. But we ended up getting, Carl was preaching. Yep. And we got you to jump up and lead worship. Planet Shakers was leading worship. Yep. And you jumped up at the end. I think that you, did you leave one of their songs? I was called Hillsong New York. Yeah, Hillsong New York City. Here's Hillsong New York City. It's one guy on an acoustic. And the Planet Checkers band. <laughs> That's right. They were really happy about that. Yeah. They love hey, that. Hey, I think you flew us here from Australia. I know, but Nathan's here. And we're just going to get him to hop up. Yeah, and they love that. I don't know what you would have led that night. But uh, I don't know. You know, some, some uh, I can't remember. Yeah. But I met you in the pool. Yeah. It was love at first sight. It was. Um, that's well over a decade now. Yeah. But I think the last few years, it's really been cool just to see you, in many ways, I think, changing the game. Talk a little bit about Theo, see you people that are out there that don't know about it, what you guys are doing, because I think it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. So the SU is essentially, um, when I was living in New York, <coughs> so I'm a Canadian and in Canada, um, like there's not a, a ton of economic disparity, um, like the, in the United States. Um, and that, that's not a commentary on, you know, on socialism versus, you know, capitalism, but it's just, it's just a reality. Okay. Like, so, so when I was living in New York, I didn't know that like whole families lived in an apartment mm. together. You know what I mean? And, and people didn't have money and, and I was meeting these, these folks and, uh, at my church that I was going to. And, and I thought to myself, like, I remember asking some, some guys like, so what are you going to do for, you know, do you feel like there's a call going on? You know, yeah, I feel like call. I'm going to, well, would you ever go to college or something? Well, I could never go to a, a Bible college. I'd have to pay for it. Like, I was like, wow. Like, yeah, they, we have no money. I don't know how I, how I could do that. And so I, it got into my, into my spirit that like, um, and I struggled, you know, going to Bible college. I went to a, 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 a pretty in, inexpensive Bible college in Portland, Oregon. But my parents, I don't come from money. My parent, my dad's a pastor, you know, in Canada. They don't, I don't know if they pay pastors in Canada. Um, <laughs> they, they arrest them. Yeah, they arrest them. Exactly. So it was a struggle for, for, for us to go. And, um, 
but all that to say, so it was in my head, like, um, what if, what if we took Bible college courses and kind of distilled them a little bit, made them a bit more palatable and then, and then charge people like the, the price of a Netflix subscription to be able to access, you know, good, um, theologically conservative, just kind of faithful, I call it historic Christian orthodoxy, just the stuff that, that Christians have believed for the last 2000 years and then create some, you know, we have like Calvinism versus Wesleyanism debates and, you know, disagreement on this, that, and the other thing, lots of room for that, but just to create something where people can learn, um, you know, and, uh, and for cheap. And so that's kind of what Theosu is. Theosu is like a place where people can, can learn theology and learn about the Bible um, for, for, for cheap. Talk a little bit about your background, because you grew up in a charismatic church household. And I think many times, like the connotation around Pentecostals is that they're not theologically savvy, sound, sharp. Yeah. Talk to me about the dynamics of your home. Like, why yeah. has theology become such like a big deal to you? Yeah. Was that always a big deal in your house? Is that how your dad raised you? Yeah, yeah. You and your brother, are, it's, you're really passionate about it. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, that's a great, that's a great point. And, and. Uh, and a great question. I think Pentecostals have been, um, so maybe sometimes by our own doing, you know, because Pentecostalism is like the wild, wild west of Christianity. It's, it's a huge landscape, and there's yeah. a lot of different things happening in Pentecostalism, right? There's Pentecostals that believe some crazy stuff. There's Pentecostals that are a bit, you know, are that are very, very theologically conservative. And um, anyways, so... Um, but if you think about it, Pentecostals, Pentecostals, actually, they really cared about the Bible and they weren't, this is, I, I learned this from, from my friend, Chris Palmer, uh, who's a, a Pentecostal scholar. Um, Pentecostals were not anti, um, anti theology or anti Bible, quite, quite the, the opposite. They, they weren't anti, um, higher education. They were anti academy. Mm -hmm. What had happened at the turn of the century is most of the Bible colleges had gone very, very liberal and progressive um, in terms of how they were reading scripture. So they didn't believe in the, in the miracles, you know, of the Bible. Uh, they began to adopt German higher criticism, form criticism, didn't believe that the scriptures were inspired and they're, you know, and, and, it's, and then it just becomes a slippery slope. So Pentecostalism kind of rejected that, that, you know, the German higher criticism and they, but they loved the scriptures and they were Bible believing people, you know, I mean, they believe that the scriptures are insp the inspired word of God. So, so Pentecostals love scripture. They love the Bible. Um, sometimes they, they, because because they, they, they don't have necessarily a long tradition, sometimes they can default into strange or literal readings. But, uh, but I'll just say, uh, so I believe the Pentecostals love the Bible and, and they're not anti-intellectuals. They just are anti-academy. Um, but, I mean, that's changed because we have some of the best yeah. schools that we have in, in America are Pentecostal. My dad loved the, the, the Bible, grew up in a, in a home where we read the Bible at dinner time, And, and on, you know, we had fa this thing called family devotion on Mondays. It was awful. And, um, what would that would, look like? Just my dad would get a guitar out and he would <laughs> sing some songs for like three or four songs and he'd make us worship and like, and make us like sing the song of the Lord, <laughs> like, you know, like, come on, Nathan, hi, lift your hands higher, the son, song louder, son. It was, yeah, totally. He'd hold my hands up. Come on. We're singing. Come on. As the deer. Here we go. You know, um, you know, prophesy. Come on, Gabriel prophesy. Uh, it was awful. We'd be crying. <laughs> oh, daddy, I don't have anything. I'm not getting anything. Um, and then we'd read like a chapter or two from a horrible book, you know, like, did, and then, and then he'd explain. So we were, for all intents and purposes, I grew up a pretty fundamentalist Pentecostal in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, but I love, I love the Bible. Um, I think a lot of my theology, Chris, and my love for theology and my love for the Bible comes from deep anxiety. You know, I believe in God. I don't want to tick him off. I want to know what pleases him. I'm sure I'm ticking them off in a lot of different ways. And so while reading script, I know, and I know that the, the Bible is God's, is, is, it's God's word. It's, you know, scripture is, so I, I want to know, I want to know where the lines are, you know, like I want to know yeah. what his will is. And I, I have fears about hell and I, I, I'm scared about what heaven would look like. And, and so a lot of my motivations have been from a place of, I have deep fear. I have a lot of questions. And I, and, and I, and I believe that the Bible can, has the answers, you know, for those things. For you on your journey, like <coughs> when you were growing up, one of the things that like 
I'm always kind of impressed with you. Like you'll do these like stories where you'll take like question and answers and you're like firing away and like just quickly, whether people like what you're saying or not, sure. it's very, very clear that your comprehension, your uh, ability to read, your ability to write is at a really high level. I, I read this book this summer. Oh, I'm going to mess it up. I think it's called The Vanishing American Adult. That's the title of it. I can't think of the guy's name. And the idea of, of the book is he's talking about this elongated like season of adolescence that men, women are not growing up essentially. Right. Like in many ways, this whole phrase for me of mature me is just that this idea of becoming who I'm called to be and stepping into every season, every stage. Yeah. But he lists one of the major things around this idea of like just reading and, and diligent reading and comprehending what it is that we're learning. I think one of the things that I, I kind of see you kind of rage against a little bit is just maybe shallow Christianity, uh, cliches, um, not really thinking deep enough about our faith. Mm. You're really into debate, really. Like sometimes I think you and I chat, and I'm like, bro, like, you, like you love so. Do you like making people mad? You know, <laughs> like, I, like do you like being annoying? Like. Yeah. But I think some of that stuff maybe is part of the way that you were raised. Yeah. Maybe just talk about some of that. Yeah, fair. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, in our in our home uh, there was always an argument, never a quarrel. So we I like that. we argued about everything, and and we learned how to argue. And you know, very early on, you know, don't, you don't go ad hominem. Don't go after. Don't you know? Don't don't start calling them names. Let's talk about and discuss. The argument that they're making and are they making a plausible case is it logical is it biblical uh so on and so forth so i really enjoy uh arguments um not quarreling or bickering with people but but having you know engaging in an exchange of ideas and finding out whether something is is worth its salt so to speak so um so yeah i do like i i, I think that and i think that there are things that that are worth um that are worth con you know uh G.K. Chesterton said that the purpose of an open mouth, uh, an open mind is like an open mouth, uh, to return it again on something solid. And I think that in, at times we've elevated conversation and open-mindedness over conclusion. Mm. And then if somebody yeah. is decided, you know, or they go, you know what, I believe that the scriptures are the fallible word of God. It's in they're inspired. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scriptures God breathed. And that's what I'm deciding on. I, think, I feel like in the postmodern era, decision is what really has ticked the postmoderns off. And so, yeah, I'm a decided guy. Um, I, I, I try to be as decided as there, and there's two types of issues. There's open handed issues and closed handed issues, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe talk about that a little bit. Cause I think that's kind of helpful. Like, yeah. What are the, yeah. So for example, like the apostles creed, that's closed handed stuff, right? Like, yep. you know, I believe in God, the father, you know, creator of heaven and earth. I'm not fudging on that one. You know, it's closed handed. I'm not, you know, I'm, I, I mean, I'll talk with people who are I'll, I'll engage with atheists and whoever who wants to talk about it. But I've decided, you know, to follow Jesus. No turning back. It's, there's decision, right? Like, and uh, and then there's open-handed, like, women in ministry. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. like, half of my faculty believe that women can preach, pastor, teach. Half of them don't. We have conversations on that. That's not a close-handed issue uh, for me. That's an open-handed issue. Uh, because the scriptures seem to say there's a there seems to be a tension there. It's like Paul's saying some things that are, you know, uh, pretty interesting that we need. And it's worth having that conversation. And it's not worth cutting people out of your life over something that you can understand. Yeah, I can see your point. You know, I can I can see the merit in your argument. You know, yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Um, another one would be maybe, uh, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, like um, I, I believe I'm a charismatic. I believe in speaking in tongues. Uh, there are people who don't know if tongues are for today. I don't know if I'm going to cut them out of my life. I don't think they're going to hell because they don't, because they're cessationists. Of course. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so Christianity is full of these close handed and open handed issues. Uh, sexuality, sexual ethics is another one where that's a close hand. That should be a close handed issue. Um, many believe it's an open handed issue, but all that to say, the scriptures are, are, are full of these things. And so I want to be the kind of guy who can identify the close handed issues um, and fellowships with people who are going, we're in unity on that. And then with the open handed issues, it's like, hey, th these are not going to be unity issues. Yeah. So, you know, and, and to be honest with you, what I found is I could actually go to any church like or most churches. 
I, like, I think I could be a Catholic. I could be a Pentecostal. I could be a Baptist. I could be a Lutheran. You know, because we, as long as we have these, these, these in common, but we have these. But some, sometimes we confuse those two, right? There's confusion or we make a bigger deal out of a close-handed issue that we just don't need to be making. I feel like you kind of have like a like a love for the Catholic Church a little bit. But can you it's true. I tell love me them. a little bit about that? I'm obsessed. I, I'm, I'm really curious about that. Like, I'm obsessed with Catholicism because uh, for, for a number of reasons. Some people would be very oh, yeah. annoyed with you saying that. Right oh, yeah. Now. They hate it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly, particularly Pentecostals and Charismatics. Um, but... Um, like give, I read give a me lot some of things that yeah yeah so love. for example um, I read a ton of Catholic literature. Uh, firstly, uh, Augustine was Catholic, Aquinas was Catholic, Martin Luther was essentially Catholic, you know, um, and a lot of the things that Catholics believe Luther and Luther and Calvin and and Catholics would have a lot in common. Catholicism as well is a really large organization, and within that organization, there's some people who are conservative theologically and maybe progressive theologically. So, so once again, it's like Pentecostals, you know, there's a lot of different movements. When you say Catholic, it doesn't just mean one dude, sure. right? And then some of my favorite authors, you know, are Catholics, uh, GK Chesterton, uh, who I quoted earlier, um, Erzben uh, von Balthasar, um, Christopher Dawson, just a, Joseph Sobran. There's so many amazing Catholic thinkers and, and, and authors and their contribution to to the church and to society. Tolkien, I mean, without Catholics, we wouldn't have Jeez. Lord of the Rings. That would suck, you know. So, so um, thank you, I Frodo think, Baggins. Totally, thank you, Frodo. Yes, Frodo. Um, so I think it's funny, like how we get <coughs> maybe like the framework in which you grew up. How oftentimes as we grow, we kind of swing towards the other side. Mm. We're like, I have so many people in my church that are so, like feel liberated from being out of the Catholic church. Like, Oh right. my goodness, this is so fun. Like <laughs> so being in the worship and there's lights and yes. like, it's free. And, yeah. Oh, there was such a burden mm -hmm. where there's sides of me that I, I'm not down with all Catholic theology by any means, yeah. but there are some practices. Like, I mean, the, the respect of the Eucharist, yeah. I don't all the way even land where they're at with communion, but yeah. just how serious they take it. Yeah. Um, I actually like some of the performance art of like, just totally. we're going to do the same yeah. thing yeah. every time. Yeah. Uh, confession, I, I don't like the idea that I have to confess to someone for, you know, my sins being forgiven, but I like the practice. Whereas yeah. I feel like in the evangelical church at times, I don't think anyone confesses sins to anybody. You know, oh. it's like, oh, just me and Jesus. Well, it's like, the yeah. Bible's pretty clear that we should confess each, our sins to each other for healing. So yeah. this is a full, you know, justification, salvation thing. But Absolutely. to you and I, we find freedom yeah. just, just in confessing to one another. So I love that practice of having an outlet to share what's going on in my life. I, I, I think that you, you nailed it that, you know, if you grow up Pentecostal charismatic, you're going to be attracted to other forms or not necessarily attracted, but, but, um, you know, maybe like, well, I never thought of it that way. So when I'm at a, when I'm in mass, I, I like to go to the mass. Yeah. I think about things that I otherwise wouldn't think about in a charismatic Pentecostal setting. Now the church that I'm a part of in Franklin, Tennessee, Holy Saints, you know, we, it's not the mass, but it's like, it is a, for all intents and purposes, a charismatic church, a yeah. charismatic Pentecostal church, right? And I don't, I don't think I'd ever like just, I don't think I'd ever convert to Catholicism. Um, but there's just things about it that are just like, this is so, so good, and um, so yeah. So it's and, and it's you're right. It's probably because of my upbringing. What do you think about like just styles and like art, um, like sometimes things that you can like walk into something. You might walk into Vu right now and right away like you with your whole gamut of like going through all the different styles of churches like right away you can have some preconceived ideas like oh this is what they're about right how do you think that's affecting people today do you, i feel like there's always like these trends yeah. in our little coldest for all of christianity you just nailed it like catholicism is massive yeah. and it's all these different folks but you and i i think have more similarities in how we grew up than how we didn't yeah and I, I've always sort of said like there's these little like buzzwords and things that happen that become cliche and people sort of they get close and all of a sudden they swing back the other way. Right. What do you think about that in terms of like just like style of walking to how people are coming kind of rage against different styles along the journey? Right. Yeah. It's so like first year Bible college to just thrash on a church that's bigger than 500 people, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so there is kind of a trend that when, a, when somebody starts to think a little bit, they just start to hate on everything. Yeah. Um, I quite like, 
large evangelical churches and large Pentecostal churches and large Baptist churches. And um, so, number one. Number two, um, I like small things too. I see the value in small things. Um, there you, sort are, of, you sort of trash small groups, though, right? I don't. I don't. I thought I, you like. I thought you like had a whole thing about like. I would never go to a small group. Oh, you know what? I don't. I, I grew up going to small groups where you I thought it was like Steve Kelly corrected you about small groups or something. No, I don't know. I thought maybe, there was maybe. a whole thing like I thought there was one time it was like yeah, like it's good for people, but I'm never going to a small group. Yeah, so I, so I don't. Weird. Yeah, I don't like small. I don't like small groups. I don't like going. So it's mainly about going to somebody's house. It's just weird for me. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, can we just do? There it is. I like, I like. I lead a, I lead a small group every other week in my house. I know, but your house is you, cool. You think people think it's weird? Well, I, I, if I, if it was in your backyard, that would be. Sick. You'll come. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I just like, I don't want to go and and sit in somebody's living room in the apartment. And, so you're and not like, against it. It's just not for you. Yeah, it's just kind of gross to me. But you do life in small group. For sure. You already have a small group. You have to, absolutely a thousand percent. I like dinner. The idea of dinner party. Yeah. That's cool. You know what I mean? Like you're going to, I like that you're going out to, to not somebody's house. <laughs> There's just something about somebody. You just don't want to go to like a weird house. Yeah. I don't like your carpet. It yeah, smells yeah. Oh, weird. Oh God, dude. I can't do carpet. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and then like you're kind of, when you're at somebody's house, you're kind of like, you don't feel comfortable. And then they're like, oh, just help yourself. I'm not going to help myself to anything. <laughs> this is weird. And from the moment I'm in your house until I leave, I feel like I'm a slave. You know what I mean? Like I don't belong to <laughs> me. Slave. You're, you know, I belong to, to 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 you. You are the master, and I'm just I'm just a, a I'm just a pleb. So, I do want to know from you, like, have you had any anxiety the last few years in terms of? I sort of think that your flow is like I'm gonna talk about anything and everything. Um, I'm at times going to. I don't know. Do you call people out? I don't know if you do that, but I feel like I see you like arguing with people sometimes on social. Like for sure, has that like love arguing? Like do you, like do you feel like you've had a target on your back? Do you think people have been against you or no? no how has that bit? How has that felt for you? I, I think that I think that um, okay. Firstly, I just say this: like in the academic world, like all it is is you name somebody and the thing that they believe, and then you either say what you agree with it or you say what you disagree about it. Right. So like, that's like, that's normal. Right. Um, I think that sometimes we are, uh, we're, we can be a little bit backwards about not ever discussing things. So, well, I, I want to honor that guy. And so I'm never going to critique anything that he has to say. And then the dude says something that's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And then there's so many people that are like it and you're like, I don't, this is this, somebody has to say something like that's, this is crazy. You know, like, um, so anyways, you know, I, I don't, I'm not the, I'm not the internet police. Um, I'm not the theology police, but sometimes something sticks out and I'm like, well, I'm going to say something about it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So I disagree with this. So I try to do it in an honoring way. Hey, I really love, um, I really love this guy. I really love his books. I've read so many of his books. I'm thankful for his ministry. And I just think that this is a, I just, a bad take. I totally disagree with this. Yeah. There's great ways that we could. And so I don't know if you've seen me do that, but that's what I do. If I'm calling somebody out directly, yeah. I always like affirm that I'm not going ad hominem on the person, but I just think that what they said or the contribution is Has is anyone weak. gotten really offended with you for doing that? Never. Not once. Never. And they always DM me. I actually had a, a You ever get a bad DM? Oh, yeah, but typically they're from, like, you know, anonymous accounts. Oh. Um, no, but for example, uh, it's probably the guy, actually. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I've got a couple different, you know. I'm... I had a, I had a run-in on Ed Young's page a, a week ago. With a guy from uh, from OC, his name's Ruslan, and he's like an Instagram kind of theology guy, and he didn't like something that Ed had to say, and and then and and then I tried to at Ruslan, but he doesn't allow ats, and so I was teasing him in the comment section like, okay, Ruslan over, who's this guy? You know, doesn't allow me. So then he DM'd me. He's like, hey, call me. So I'm like, absolutely. So I call him straight away. We had an hour long talk about. And was that positive? It was so good. It was the best thing ever. Yeah. And he was, and I, I got to share where I was coming from on the, the piece. He got to share what he was coming from on the piece. And I, okay, I got you. I, I see where you're coming. And it was super, super awesome. And I've had lots of those, um, you know, because I'm, I'm looking for things that are for mutual upbuilding for sure. Yeah. But you know, there is a, there is something to having a platform, particularly being on Instagram. And I think that we have to remember that it's demo, it's democratic. That's the beauty of Instagram. It's democratic. Like, so if you say something, you should be a f a prepared to defend your thesis. 
right? Like it's what we do in the, in in college, in high school, in university. You can't just say stuff and put it out there for public and then expect nobody to ever. And people pushing back isn't hate either. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if somebody disagrees with me, they aren't hating on me. I don't have to take a victim complex and go, oh, I got all these haters because I said something ludicrous, <laughs> right? So so that's the give and take of being, A, a public person, B, somebody who who has a thesis on, on any given topic, on theology, or maybe it's political or what have you. And we need these, we need more engagement and more conversation with one another, not less. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful for people, anybody, I'm grateful for um, uh, Tim Ross for doing Upset the Gram uh, in the basement, whatever it's called, and taking on really all kinds of crazy conversations. And I don't always agree with Tim, and Tim would not always agree with me, but I'm thankful that he's like, um, I like, I like um, disagreement. I love it. We need it. I love conflict. I think that the future of all social media is conflict and not salacious, mm. right? So huge difference because we want to, like the world is full of all kinds of ideas and the exchange of ideas. And as Christians, we need to be right in there just talking about what's happening well, in the world. Tim's a very good friend of mine yeah. and someone that I'm, I'm so thankful for. Mm. Of course, I don't hear, I don't hear all the content you make. I don't hear all the content he makes, but he's someone that I know. And where I'm really thankful for him is that he goes there Absolutely. on things in a long format. Yeah. He speaks from a place of vulnerability. Yeah. I can't tell you how many stories I have of people who have found such hope, such healing, yeah. because he is in this space that I don't think you could even cover on a Sunday morning. Correct. Not because you're afraid. No. It's just the length of time, it's not the, format. the niche of pain <coughs> and trauma, the things that he's dealing with. And mm. so... But where would you land like today? Because this is just interesting to me. Yeah. Like I have such a different, I'm in a local context in a community, yeah. building people. Yeah. Whereas like, let's talk about like Theos U memes. Yeah. That's some bad stuff's funny to me. But like for me where that would be like really like, oh, this bro, this don't hit is like, it doesn't, I, I don't think it all the way lands well in a local context because you can't build anything right. with that type of sarcasm. It's not that I don't think it's something's funny yeah. and that I think, I think the best part is that you make fun of yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that says a lot, but yeah. those are interesting to me. Like, what, what would you say about that? Yeah, Theosu sure. memes and people yeah. that are watching that. Yeah, so Theosu memes is, <laughs> it's, there's about eight, fix this, there's about eight or 10 guys that are, that, that, that admin Theosu memes. We have a, a, a big chat where guys create memes and they post them and, and Thank you, sir. some of them are, I thought I are hilarious. And some of them are, you know, a bit, a bit cheeky. Has little, anything ever gone too far? You're like, bro, you can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so one of my pastors will call me and ask me to take it down. And I, and I do. Yeah. Um, cause I have, I have people in my life that tell me when I go too far. Um, and, and, and in, in the space of comedy and Christianity, I mean, those are two things that I think have a hard time mixing because Christians take themselves so seriously. I think a part of that, I, I think that, that I think that if we were funnier, if we were a bit more humble, we would find things a lot more funny mm. and it would probably cure much of the egotism and, and, and all of the, the horrible things that come along with that. Um, you know, but like, I think, uh, Someone, someone once said that humor is like a, a rubber sword. You make the point without drawing blood. And so there mm. is a part of Theos You Memes where I think sometimes points need to be made. So without, you know, taking somebody to task in some, you know, 10 real yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you just make a joke. This little meme yeah, totally accomplishes a lot. Totally accomplishes it keeps a lot. it moving. Yeah. yeah, also, sometimes the memes are just, it's just stupid, you know, like, because it's, because, because it's just funny and it's stupid. It's okay for things to just be there for a laugh. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a very, um, it's, it's, it can be niche. You know, I mean, I think that some, some, sometimes it's a bit cathartic. I don't know what you rich, but like growing up in church, I mean, we've seen some really crazy things and we've talked about it before oh, many times, like crazy things that we've seen. And we're not like, angry at the people who yeah, did yeah. the crazy stuff but you know 
it's kind of like if you can't say it, it has to be said. Wow. <laughs> and I think that maybe it's part of, you know, it's part of just, I, I love the church. I love Jesus. I love leaders. I love theology. And, but sometimes you just have to make fun of yourself or your brother or your friend who, you know, who's, who, who's gone to, you know, did something crazy, you know, like what, like if, if a pastor does something absolutely crazy and he videos it and then he puts it on the, on the, you telling me that nobody should touch that? Really? Nobody should touch that? Like somebody has to, you know, in medieval times, they had the court jester and the court jester was employed by the king to make fun of funny things and say things that weren't allowed to be said with impunity, with protection from the king. Mm. Now the court jester loved the kingdom. And that was it. The, the court jester loved the kingdom, but but he had to say the things that were naughty, that that were that were unsaid, that you know the nobleman couldn't say or, the, or that the king couldn't say. And sometimes it went the king's way. Mm. And sometimes it went the nobleman's way. But the court jester is like, it's a part of, of the Christian ideal where you gotta say. Sometimes you just got to say what you're not allowed to say. Mm. And, I, and so, yeah, I'll defend Theos you memes to the day that I die because I think that there needs to be a place where we go, dude, I love you. I love the kingdom. I love the church. And that's funny. Yeah. And it's, and it's awkward. Well, I feel like you're attacking them. I'm not attacking anybody. Well, but I definitely think that it's a dangerous place when I think we certainly grew up in a place where it's – I always teach our staff, our team. I'm like, listen – what we do is serious, but in order to go the distance, you can't take yourself too serious. I take my calling serious, yeah. but I don't take myself too serious. Yeah. And there is some beauty in being able to laugh at yourself and bringing humility. One of the great gifts that I've watched throughout the years for you is you have this ability to talk about deep things, hard things, and then somehow bring humor into it. We were just uh, somewhere teaching together, and I just sat there during your teaching just blown away at the gift that God's given you, but also the way that you've sharpened it. Uh, you talked about jo uh, Joseph in Babylon, but man, it was dense stuff that you were teaching out of. It was long format. There was a lot of word in there, but you were able to come up for air so many different times and bring authentic humor to it. How would you say like on your journey, just for people that are watching, there's different leaders out there watching, like finding your voice, finding like your kind of special thing. And I think we're always on a journey of that. People are like, I found my voice. Well, like we're always finding it more and more, but I feel like you've really honed in on some things. Mm. Any thoughts or tips that you'd give around that? Yeah, for sure. So I remember <coughs> like seven or eight years ago, I was in Miami with a, a youth pastor named Rich Wilkerson Jr. Uh, he was a youth pastor and he had this like thing called rendezvous. And I was living in New York at the time, leading worship at Hillsong, New York. And I, there was something in me that like, I, I was in a, I was in a, I was, God was doing something in my, in my heart about ministry. I was kind of running away from it. And, um, and, and so I, yeah, so, so I, I remember being in the back of this guy's Jeep, Rich Wilkerson Jr. He had this little, it was like a Suzuki sidekick. I don't know what it Still was. Still got that thing. Yeah. Anyways, so I'm in the back, DC's in the front and I'm like, Richie, like, how do you preach? Cause like I went to Bible college. They don't teach you how to preach at Bible college. Right. right. And you turned around and you said, well, Rich Wilkerson Jr. Turned around and he said to me, dude, just do what, like what you know that how you like you're being an idiot in the back of the jeep right now and we're just having fun and laughing like you have to find a way to get that nathan on the stage and it's like a light bulb went off i was like so so, <laughs> so this works yeah so i can be me because i thought that there was like this whole form and the form was just so out of reach for me mm. also i didn't want to be the person that I thought, you know, you know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the humorless, witless, you know what I mean? Like I don't know how to do that because I only know how to be naked. Spineless. You're spine, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just keep going. <laughs> I want to be brave. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a real boy. Yeah, I was going. Uh, so, 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 so you said it to me and it was like, it was a seed that went into my heart wow. and has been 
germ it germinated for a while and it, it began to bear fruit, you know, initially in New York, but finding your voice, it's it's who you are in the backseat of a car with your friends. Mm. And it's who you are uh, and maybe it's not funny. Maybe in the backseat of a car, you're the guy who like is a you obsessed with details and you're pedantic and yeah. you're you're a butterfly inspector. I mean, like whatever, because p- people love niche and they love authenticity. Yep. And and many times those are things that we're ashamed of. High school does a number on us. When you're in high school, you f- you hide all of the best parts of you and you adopt all of these things that aren't really you. And. So, you know, you become, you know, oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like this. You know, I never told anybody that I played video games in high school. You'd get, a, you'd get beat up. I went to school in high school in the 90s, dude. Like, that was, that was like the peak of bullying, you know? It was like, so I hid who I was in high bullying school. Bullying was celebrated in the 90s. No, it, absolutely. <laughs> bullies were the heroes. They were. Yeah. And for bullies good reason. Bullies were cool, man. They were. I still love them. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when you get out of high school, you realize this person who I've become and all of these habits that I've adopted, they're actually not me. And if I try to keep on building on that, I'll never be good at it because it's not actually who I am. Mm. And so very quickly out of high school, I began to, you know, foster, you know, parts of me. But anyways, long story short, the, the Nathan thing, like I, I just, I can't, what I love about listening to you, Rich, is that when you preach, I see Richie mm. and I hear Richie. And when I speak, I want to be Nathan, you know? So the, the best compliment I could possibly get from my wife, if I ask her how I did was, you know, that, that I was Nathan, you know, and, and the power's there, you know, because God anoints people. And, um, you know, the, the, the crazy thing about God anointing people is that our, if it's true that our personalities are just a product of trauma, right? The five mm. stages of childhood wounding, and your personality is literally just you trying to protect yourself Wow! in a world of relationships. Jim McNeish, I think once, once remarked Love to me that, that, guy. He, that he, that maybe like the personality doesn't exist, doesn't even exist outside of people. Have you ever like met somebody from high school and you revert back to the idiot that you were in high school? Yep. It's because that person that you're reverting back to, that's how you protected yourself around that person when you were 16. Wow. So we still, so if the personality is actually just created by trauma, isn't it so paradoxical that God uses our traumas <laughs> and sort of puts them on display to present the gospel in really authentic ways? And that when we really tap into our personality, which is just pain, and it really is just us trying to protect ourselves, somehow in a paradoxical way, God's like, I love that part. It's beautiful. You know? So, I want my personality to be all over a sermon, not at the expense of the word of God, not, a, you know, not taking away from people because I'm so passionate about theology. I'm so passionate about the Bible. The more, the, you know, the older I get, the more I am passionate about it. Um, but that my personality that would be some sort, some, somehow a window, you know, kind of like art is a window. The Catholics love the idea of art being a window. And you look through that, that window, that art, and you see Christ and you see the, the gospel so that my personality broken, you know, you know, but redeemed, uh, you know, and sanctified could be a window that, that you know, that people could see the scripture. The idea that you're talking right here about <coughs> God anointing people, yeah. the word there is that God anoints the actual you, not the projected you. Totally not the mask. Yeah. Not the mask. Yeah. And that thought even way back in the Jeep. That's still my thought. I give myself to this day mm. and it sounds so easy, but for me, it's just taken a lot of work to try to figure out how do I bring the totality of who I am totally into this moment? And yeah. you know what? Sometimes I don't always get that. Yeah. I hate that feeling of performing. There's, there's always a level of like communicating on a stage that you're, I always call it like the exploited version of you a little bit where you're, you're bringing it all out to the forefront, but Absolutely. you know, when you're in that performative mode and I just, the older I get, the more I cringe at that. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons maybe why we, re, you know, yeah. resort so, back to that. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. Okay. So like, we could like, for example, a great meme would be that like pastors of successful churches are always working out and they're always, they're never, you know, they're never eating carbs. Which is me. That. Totally. But let's, but let's, let's just say that that's true. What if that's actually who the, that person is though? Yeah. 
Do you know what I mean? Like if that person is totally. like, you know, then that's, then for me, that's, that's super why I don't tra- back down to your freaking memes on those totally. things. Totally. So you should, you, so, so you should talk about, uh, you should be who you are. Yeah. You know? And so, so, well, it's fun to you know, do a meme because it's, it's just funny. You know what I mean? It's just fun. I mean like, and your love for bullies. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. So it's like, okay, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So if it's true, then it's worth making Keep a joke you. about, but also, you know, I'm playing, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing the devil's advocate, but I'm, I'm, I'm supporting, I'm, I'm, I'm going, whatever is true about that person is authentic about that person. I actually want more of that. So I want to see you doing a, a marathon and I want to see you, yeah. you know, I, I, I mean, I, I, I did the cold plunge at your house like a month ago or whatever. I wanted. To, How I wanted, long did you last? Tell everybody. I lasted for so long. I think the first time, fifteen seconds. By the way, I did. I did uh, three minutes. Um, Bro, a, a month ago. The thing about you in a cold plunge that was so good is like you took it so serious. Like I'm like I'm like now Nathan. When you get in there, like don't be like make a big. Because my thing that annoys me when people get in the cold plunge is like oh god. Like <laughs> you're like you you were listening. He like so coachable and so humble. You're like okay okay, and you got that thing. You sat and you're like. <sighs> I'm out. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like I was not expecting my it at all. feet. My feet were, I had to get over the feeling that my feet were getting stabbed. Yeah. All the limbs of the end parts over crush, you yeah, know? Yeah, totally. Um, your passion today is seeing people equipped with the Bible, knowing it. Uh, the SU is not trying to compete with, uh, today, maybe, maybe correct me where I'm wrong. You're really trying to bring theology to the everyday man who I, I like one of the things is like, you can go at your own pace. Um, oh, that's th- sort of Theos Seminary. Yeah, like all the seminary yeah. stuff. It's, yeah. it's, I, I feel like you're like, hey, assignments are due when you do them. Like, yeah. there's a lot of language that's very, very disruptive. Yeah. But talk about your, maybe just your passion there, what, what you're actually seeing today, how many people are on. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just some of your dreams around that. Yeah, fair. So, so, so Theos U is like, it's just videos, and like video courses. We release two every month. Uh, a lot of churches like buy them. So like we'll sell like 150 logins to churches. And it's just a way that churches can upskill. Smart. They're, they're, they're small group leaders and, and their pastors. Staff. Yeah. And we don't know everything. We don't have it. Like, like I said, our staff literally disagree with one another on a lot of things. Uh, but we have the main things in common. And, you're presenting um, the arguments. You're presenting, yeah, exactly. you're presenting the framework. Yeah. I think it's really important to know why some people wouldn't want women to pastor, or preach, or teach. And then come and take my course on why I think that they should. You know, like, and so <clears throat> it'll make you better you know, for, or, or I'm not a Calvinist, but I want to know why Calvinists believe in the sovereignty of God the way they do. And I find myself going, wow, there's some things that you guys say that are just so good. And, and I don't want to straw man your argument. I want to know it so that I can and, and actually mm. be able to replicate the argument. Um, I think there's honor in that. Um, so, yeah, we we're a, we're a, we're a, you know, we're, we're trying to upskill. We, we, it's resourcing. So if you're a small group leader and you're like, what should I You know, a lot of people take their teenagers through. Defense Against the Dark Arts, which is like an apologetic course, or or take people through the Book of Hebrews, or whatever it is. Um, so that's all fun. And then we have the seminary, which is like 99 bucks a month, and it's a degree program. We go right from bachelor to a master's program. Uh, we're partnered with SEU, uh, who, at the, at the provost of SEU, Megan Griffin, discovered us because of Theosu Memes. Um, she is a massive fan of Theos you memes. <laughs> and their whole this is pragmatism, like, by the way. This no, is, uh, <laughs> I'm dead serious. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, I will say this about Theos you memes. Yes, we sometimes we go too far. But I'd rather be on the front foot than on the back foot. I'm just here asking the questions, man. No, dude, just... a thousand percent. If, you, if, there's, if, you, if you're trying to find a problem with Theos you memes, gu- guaranteed, I've found problems with Theos you memes. <laughs> it's out of control. It's a beast that I've created. But, uh, but Theos Seminary is like... Um, it's at your own pace. Go as fast as you want to finish your degree. Go as slow as you want to finish your degree. We're off semesters. Um, you can start literally today. So, like, I, I just love. Uh, we're charismatic. We're we're theologically conservative. So we're not teaching people, you know, new fangled ideas. We're teaching yeah. people what church the Christians have believed for two thousand. You, know, you know, for me, uh, I grew up in a Pentecostal home, um, but it's funny. Like, my grandfather was good friends with like Robert Schuler. He used to kind of preach in that that twenty four minute pocket. Yeah. Messages like um, "cry a river, build a bridge, and get over it." Right. You know, like yeah. just hopeful. My dad was this like assemblies of God kind of itinerant. Like only thing that matter was like getting souls. You know, winning souls. We moved to Miami in nineteen ninety eight, and I ended up going for high school up to a Presbyterian high school. Um, the late D James Kennedy who was the author of the EE Outline, Evangelism Explosion. It's my first time like being confronted with like Calvinism. And in fact, I felt like every day I went to school, it was like they were con- trying to convert me. Like they didn't think I was a Christian. 
But like learning tulip, learning all of it has really, really impacted me. I ended up going to a Church of God Bible college. Uh, I've got a lot of different kind of stuff in me. But even that today, like I have such a great respect for Calvinism. Uh, this might surprise me, but I, I can't tell you how many John MacArthur messages I have listened to. Yeah. Um, my friend Costi Hinn has helped me tremendously. Yeah, love um, Costi. I'm also great friends with a lot of Word of Faith and Charismatic guys. Yeah. And I, I think my personality has been relational. Um, I think that I want to believe I have a pastor's heart. I want to believe that I love learning from people. But I think growing and once again, maturing is realizing that every person I come in contact with is someone that I can learn from. And I love the Church of Jesus Christ. And I love all the different types, sizes, shapes, sizes. I'm just, I'm a church builder, I'm a church critic. I'm not using that as a cliche. I think it's like, I'm actually building this thing. I just know what it takes. For you, from your vantage point, as we're kind of wrapping around here, I, I, I don't mean this to be like negative by any means, but what do you think the great threat is today for the, maybe, maybe once again, we'll try to speak in our lane a little bit, like maybe just the evangelical, charismatic, cul-de-sac of church what what do you think the the great threat is that's looming that maybe we're unaware of or maybe some of us are aware of it you know i'm um i just i don't i don't see any major thing like i i don't i'm not the kind of guy that's like this all oh, the church is backsliding the church is um uh, i think in every century the church has been backsliding and the church has been growing in every century, the church is is being visited by the by the Lord, and 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 it you know and and there are there are people that are it's there's wheat and there's tares, um, so I, I I'm excited for the future of the church. I think the the, the church is growing all over the world. Yeah. The church is becoming Pentecostal, all over the world, um, and I'm excited for the future of the church. I I think that we need to be in America, a lot more kind to the church. That's the only thing that I would say. It's like, I think that we beat on the church so much. Oh, don't do this. And they don't do that. Or I can't believe that you know, evangelicals vote this way or evangelicals do this. Or da, 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 da. It's like, no, I think that the church is doing good. Jesus is still superintending it. He still walks among the, the candlesticks. And, um, and I don't, you know, I think that the church will take different, uh, you know, Paul the apostle didn't spend a lot of time on blueprints for a local church, did he? Uh, never really said anything. <laughs> Didn't yeah. seem like it really mattered. I know that there was, they met in the temple and they met house to house from Acts chapter two. Um, I don't know what the, I, I, I'm sure that there will be large gatherings and small gatherings and, and um, you know, there's a lot of people that are really very passionate about discipleship right now. And Gen Z is going to be okay. You know, they're going to be fine. Yep. They're going to be okay. You know, like, Yep. And there's going to be people who fall away. There's going to be new people that come and, and there's going to be new blood. And Jesus is building his church and I'm here to build it with people who, who love who love Jesus. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. I appreciate you. You got to come back sometime. The pleasure has been all we'll mine. All the, we'll get into all the real controversy. But <laughs> uh, Nathan yep. Finocchio, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, maybe leave a comment. Uh, any kind of questions around <coughs> theology? Uh, by no means am I a theologian, but it's something that I do care about. And we want to bring guests on that we can answer some of your questions yep. from time to time. We're grateful for every one of you. As we always say, like it, subscribe, share it, mm -hmm. do us a favor and spread the word. We love all of you guys. We'll see you right here next time for yep. some more Mature Me. And ask Pastor Rich if Satan never had a girlfriend. <laughs> Who knows? Did he? I don't know. He'll know. Could have. <laughs> Bingo. Hey, that was great. <laughs>